videos on my Vauxhall Corsa uh, where I've had a double in head unit installed before with a mic jack etc and uh, I don't think anyone's done any videos on showing how this is installed and people charge you some ridiculous amount we've already paid a lot for the radio this installation or, or uninstallation is going to be the same as installation reverse um, and works in the same manner as it would do for any app radio so um, the head unit largely just comes out like this this clip I just unclipped that so it doesn't make a massive noise if you got two pins there you would undo uh, and then underneath this part here I've actually hidden or concealed the uh, sat nav and the wiring loom for that headphone jack so that goes all the way through comes out at the bottom here where I've tucked it in um, and via that route there and through this column down drops through the middle of the thing and then plugs into the back of the head unit car so here I've just uh, loosened the head unit and it's slid out of the cage uh, and you can see the rim of the cage that I've installed in there um, if we go in the glove box you'll see here uh, there we go for one sec I've got my two um, I suppose USB in um, only one works on iPad the other one is for like updates and plugging USB cables and then I've got my auxiliary in cable as well which I've basically threaded through that hole which is already there and connects straight back so basically through there and comes out behind the head unit here um, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second so here is the back of the weird wonderful head unit so um this is your pin for the sat nav your two USB ports your rear audio out if you use that there's some other controls here these I guess come with this particular head unit to control your subwoofer and other speakers directly or individually um, you then get your auxiliary port that goes into the back of it here um, that's your radio, this blue cable is the other the auxiliary port this right here is the microphone on the back um, I do apologize, it's a bit unclear, and then here is the power lead so I'll start by just sort of moving this out of the way, Work for, working from I suppose right to left, so I'll take out the if I can manage it, one hand, it's a bit difficult ok so essentially let's start here, so I'll take out the USB, so that's now disengaged um, the power cable which basically is a clip uh, and then you gently pull and that will come out this is your stereo control here and I'll show you where that connects back up to so this goes into the connects to module that's the auxiliary port I'm now removing here and then the radio port, that's quite difficult you need two hands to carefully remove that and then this is your microphone jack which if you can follow the cable threads basically back up through here along with the uh, rather along with the uh, antenna for the satellite navigation which should come out if I am careful yep there you go so that's come out and that's satellite navigation um, and then this is the bare bones of the back of it okay so for this bit let's just work on these USB cables and the auxiliary cable that I have um, threaded through so I basically reached in here and I won't put my phone in there but because you probably won't be able to see in the lighting but essentially that cable goes straight through there and then comes through over the top and down back into the glove box here so if you see these cables here if I pull here you can see that there's some cable moving there and that's basically how it's fitted through now it doesn't have to be massively secure but it'll do the job and it's long enough to come through through the passenger box right okay now this is all the wiring loom that basically goes into the back of my head unit so here you can see the connects to uh, steering control many cars will come with that and this over here is my stock adapter which is all part of this one unit so this is one half and this is the other half that plugs into your I suppose either Sony or Pioneer um, unit usually this comes in two chunks but if you can see mine is one let's get it to zoom on the double inside so there it's it, usually where you can see that breaker here uh, it can be two units but on this one it's one um, and this is basically I suppose something you need to buy that's unique to your car and that will have adapt to all these sort of different those are radio controls and those are obviously music and volume controls so that's what will manage all of that um, and then here you've got I guess the radio control so this I had to wire properly um, which I can show you in better detail I had to crimp that because uh, the person that originally installed it who's a professional installation uh, company that you can find in London didn't actually install it properly they left this hanging loose um, out and I couldn't really figure out why I couldn't get the right sort of uh, signal into my um, into my radio settings because this is a, a type of uh, I suppose aerial that requires a power boost and, and that looks something like this and this goes back into the stock so that will go back into my stock head unit this black piece here this orange piece is an adaption um, and this of course was the 
adapter you saw in the back of my head unit earlier and this requires some sort of I guess boost so it needs to map into where the uh, remote control start would be for your amplifier for example um, but you've still got enough wire to still then actually add an amplifier if you wanted to um, and then that maps back into the head unit in the main loom so that's that right so I've just basically unplugged that loom from here and um, there's a clip on the side this is obviously a Vauxhall and you'll see similar ones in the Astros and other courses won't be any different along with the head unit cord so that should be live and you can use that too right um, and then this cage would come out by pulling up these clips with a screwdriver like so this one's a bit weak so I don't really want to use it but you can see that you can just basically push those back up and then it will literally just slide out again uh, and lock in place or you can essentially remove this and put back in the stock on so, so that's basically how you remove that cage and then this plastic trim that comes with it and you can put back in your original or in uninstalling you would slide this cage in bend in these bits so it clips in and you're good to go basically in a nutshell so I'll take that all out and then I'll show you how I took the uh, install the microphone and uh, this piece threaded that through from the actual uh, sat nav right now to show you how I removed this top part here in the video before but essentially you just got to get a credit card and just try and pop one of these corners and what will happen is I'm not using a credit card I'm using my service card but I don't really need it anymore and then that once you can get under there and get a grip um, it will come out this is a bit Okay, so to show you again, uh, that card wasn't really going to work. So if I do that, that will come up and it literally just pops out like that. So now you have that there. You can see there's a screw there you need to undo and you want to be careful of that speaker. But you can already see the cable that I was using for that uh, headphone piece there. So I'll go ahead and remove that screw and I'll show you what it looks like next. Oh, one more point to add. Around the edge of this, there's more clips. And basically undo all that, this piece will then actually be able to come off. Um, and you can essentially then get access to everything behind or underneath that unit uh, in a similar manner you might want to change the LEDs in there so that's pretty accessible and there's loads of tips to find out how to do that and then you just drop the wires through down into the um, I guess center of the unit that your console is at so all I've done now is basically pull this up and if you look underneath you can see my sat nav unit there and uh, further in in the center is where I've actually threaded through this um, I guess microphone piece so that will just basically slot back out and um, I've threaded some of the cable under there that will then come back out by right here um, and then that can basically all come off so I'll remove this part and then show you what it looks like so this is what it looks like underneath so there you can see my GPS unit and here if I can just hold that up with one hand is the remainder of the cabling so all I've got to do is pull that through and you can see that I've slid it down there um, past these air conditioning units and in through here um, and then that will just basically slip back up so then I can remove that and that's pretty much how I've done all the cabling and even for the sat nav which is very easy to remove um, here I've just threaded the cable back in through this hole um, and I can literally just unmagnetize it and drop it through and it will all come out uh, straight forward from there right guys so just to show you this is like the stock input and this is the aerial input the aerial input slots right into the back of my that's the stock pins and that's the aerial pin there so that will just slot in there and then i'll basically push my standard head unit in to take it out i'll put masking tape on the front like that to make sure you don't scratch it and then use a two pin plug to basically um shimmy it out but uh, i won't do a video on that because i'm going to reinstall this one um but that pretty much concludes it as you can see i've got everything back i just need to clip in this piece here again that screw there um, I wouldn't use a screwdriver because the windscreen is quite close I'd use a drill bit and a plier to sort of manually tighten it very carefully so I don't ruin the threads on there um, and then push it back and then I'll clip that in uh, properly once I've uh, finished installing this just in case I need to remove that all again it's a bit of a pain to get out and that's pretty much it